apostate is our last part of the work and we are now on page 80. And we're looking now at additional cultural value orientations here. So Hofstede has said that we could add more cultural um, orientations along Cluckhorn and Strabig's value orientations. So these are five cultural dimensions. I'm also going to include in the slideshow the study that was done. So you can just read here at the bottom of page 80. Paul Shute did a survey on five campuses to see what they would choose in terms of an orientation. And it can be quite interesting to see which ones they would choose in terms of the Hofstede value orientations. So let's go into the first one. Power distance. This is the way members of a cultural group or culture deal with inequalities. So within the culture, is there high power or low power? High power being that there is more need and there is a hierarchy. There's more respect for authority. There's a need for rules and regulations. Whereas in low power, there's more equality. Power should only be used in legitimate circumstances. There should be more or less hierarchy. So maybe more in Western cultures, you might see a hierarchy. And in other cultures, there wouldn't be. And in some cultures, it's disrespectful to not even have a hierarchy because it's implying that, you know, there is no order in this, you know, place here. So they give an example there that when an American guy went over to this um, country and he was managing everyone in India, then he decided to use an approach where, okay, everyone can just do whatever they want. You can manage your time. There's no hierarchy here. The um, employees did not understand what was going on because they didn't know what they should be doing. They thought that this was a very, um, not quite a, an incompetent way of trying to handle this because he didn't act the way a boss would as in the Indian culture. And then in terms of Paul's study in the campuses, the students preferred a low distance. So the students preferred that within a, a culture, there shouldn't be hierarchy. Everyone should be equal and there shouldn't be so much authority. And then they also noted here that this could be because students haven't worked before and therefore don't understand how businesses could be, you know, could work there. How in your culture is masculinity versus femininity here? Degree to which gender-specific roles are valued. So how does your culture value masculinity being um, assigned with sort of values of ambition, acquisition of material? and feminine being more nurture and quality of life. So in what way does your culture value that it is the, you know, the men should be the wage earners, women should be, you know, doing this, um, should be taking care of things at home, or within the culture, do they believe that it should be more feminine um, focused? And this can also depend on the country that you come from, that it could be a female president, that there is a more equality for women. But within the culture, you will notice that men and women do take on certain roles. And in what way do you find that there are gender specific roles? Or maybe there isn't. In Paul's survey, it was shown you that there should be more of a feminine dimension. The next one is uncertainty avoidance. To what degree do people try to avoid uncertainty being threatening by unknown situations? Within your culture, do they believe in high uncertainty avoidance, which is to that they don't want to take risks, um, it makes them nervous and emotional, and they prefer to have rules and regulations and so on. Or low uncertainty, which is to that they, you know, they're willing to take the risk and they have a low stress level, they're willing to find out what's going to happen, and this also does depend on the countries. I think it would be in the... Um, low uncertainty would be associated with more like UK, Ireland, Hong Kong, the US, more Western cultures. Whereas in the Eastern cultures, we have um, Greece, Portugal, and Japan, um, which is more strong uncertainty and prefer more rules and regulations. So in Paul's study, it, it, the way you can try and think about it is you come to a internship business and the boss tells you, okay, give me a, a report by the end of the day. Would you want to just, you know, create a report or would you prefer some rules and some guidance? 
Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'd like to know exactly what I have to do so I don't have to waste time. And therefore, I prefer more of a high uncertainty avoidance. I want to know what to do. So this does depend on the person, the degree of the culture as well, of how they want to do things. But some people want to avoid uncertainty. Individualism versus collectivism has its own value orientation. Individualism being the I identity, it's all about me and my career and the person, where collectivism has to do with the we identity and taking care of the entire group. Okay, When it comes to the individual, there's more of a direct confrontation to solve problems, whereas in the collectivism, prefer to be non-confrontational. And then, of course, we also have our textbook examples that you can read through and um, just look through all the different kind of student statements there. And in terms of Paul's study, nature of us is collectivistic. And mostly because I'm, it be, can be because we come from the African cultures, it mostly falls under collectivistic. Remember, you don't have to be one or the other. There is a blend here that can occur. And lastly, long-term versus short-term orientation. This is how you feel towards life uh, um, in terms of the balance between virtue versus the truth. So in terms of the short-term orientation, these are people considering getting quick results, society to, societal pressure to keep up, um, concerned with possessing the truth and wanting to know and kind of getting exactly what you want when you want it. And then you get long-term, which is perseverance, virtue being goodness, um, doesn't matter how long it takes to get this. And if there is something you really want in life, you will work towards it. Than to try to get something very quickly just to help that self gratification. So it can depend. Um, they say here it can also tie into religion, such as with Buddhism, you would have long term orientation. And in terms of Paul's study, students would like more to work towards long term and try to get exactly what they want out of life. Okay, how do we feel about Hofstede's value orientations? Which one would you choose that falls within your culture there? And then lastly, on your page 84, the limitations to doing value frameworks, which is that what is Klaakon and Stradbeck and Hofstede not considering when they're creating these theories, that cultural groups just have these value orientations? What are they not thinking about? The first thing is they're not thinking about within our value orientations, you need to look at individuals. Everybody is different. So when you're thinking, okay, I'm in this cultural group, that means I must have this value orientation. This is not true. Just because you are um, within this cultural group doesn't mean you agree because remember, culture is dynamic and heterogeneous. So you need to remember that the individual within the culture is, you know, everyone's going to be different there. Everyone has a different point of view. Secondly, the value system each society ignored in terms of solving problems we need to also look that within different societies, there could be a different value system, and we can't just assign them these values. Thirdly, conducting comparison surveys may be difficult. The fourth, the theory takes a deductive approach to solve problems. Maybe um, it could try to criticize and be more analytical in this sense, um, because this is quite a way to generalize a society. And lastly, there's a danger of excluding other value orientations by putting towards these categories. Remember, there's quite a heterogeneous society that we have here of um, a culture, and we need to take into account all of those differences of culture as well. Okay, I've also just put in here Clark and Strabig's value orientation, where you can get the, the theory there, and I think I have included it in the lesson plan. Okay, so we have completed learning in one theme one and um, in theme two as well. Please see your lesson plan with all those activities and additional resources and complete the textbook and recent activities as well. Remember to take notes on your slideshow. And please remember to take notes because it's quite a lot of theory and they do inter um, interconnect with each other as well. So make sure that you are keeping track of everything and um, write down your questions of anything else you want to recap on.